Hi, I'm Sam with JBugs.com, and in this video, we're going to replace some floor pans with the body on this 1967 Beetle. This is the driver's side floor pan. What we're going to do, or what I'm going to do, is cut along this seam and along this seam all the way down to the back rear cross member and then I'll cut there. Right here where we have the pedal assembly, we need to be very cautious because we actually have the brake line coming around. We don't want to cut that brake line through. So I'll be very cautious with my cutoff wheel along here and along here. And then right here, I'll actually come in and cut all the way up to the heater channel through the floor pan. So that's the process of doing this with the body on. Noting this indentation for the pedal assembly in the floor and how close to the brake line is to it, and then this bolt and how close the brake line is to right here, we want to be very, very cautious not to cut up through that when we're installing our floor pan. I'm going to bend this tab here and this tab here and pull this brake line up just a little bit to make sure we don't cut it. leave that guy there give us a little bit more room along there and there so when I cut along this line I know I'm not going to cut through our brake line so it gives us some good cuts there and I want to do the same thing at the back section so when I get back there I can worry about that when I get there whatever I'm just gonna take the saws on and get to it Hopefully, I didn't touch that brake line. Looks like we're clear. Get that wheel and tire out of the way. There we go. Just like that, and then we'll come in after we get the floor pans unbolted, and we'll cut that last bit of the floor pan without cutting into the box. So all the hair is good, all the hair is good. Now I need to go all the way down that way. Put that in place there. Make sure that he is safe and tucked away because there is a lip on the tunnel and this brake line sits above that lip. We should be safe all the way down to the back side. Seeing as this cable on that side is already broken, I'm not going to be too concerned about cutting through this and seeing as it's all rusty, I'm not concerned about it either. Uh, in most cases, we would actually cut this loose from the floor pan, pull this out, pull the cable up, just disconnect it and pull it out. But again, this one's already cut. I'm not too concerned about it right now. So I'm just going to continue cutting all the way back up to this point. And then we cut down here all the way out to right here. We leave this piece in place. Let me continue on. Now about right before the heater line, so we're going to expect a little bit more resistance right through there. Again, obviously make sure that we're safe and not cutting into the brake line, but we need to stay up on top of this lip, not down on this lip. So now we've got the floor pan cut from here all the way to all the way back into right in there. So from this point to the tunnel, leaving that lip along the tunnel to the rear cross member, out to the heater channel, this floor pan's cut free. leaving this old lip in place, which the fun part's gonna be coming back and hammering and banging that out, but we'll get to that after we get both floor pans out of the way. Maybe I'll just show it on just this one side. The right side is exactly the same as the left, just flip-flopped, and since there's no brake line to worry about, it's actually much easier, and you don't have to remove the pedal assembly. This is the more difficult side. We'll go very, very in-depth. This is actually the old floor pan welded on top of the tunnel spine. I will pry this up and I'll show you guys that process as well. So we're cut from here 
all the way to the back. Now I'm gonna unbolt all the four pan washers underneath. Underneath, I'll show you what it looks like here. We've got the four pan cut to right here, but not through to this edge yet, because we've got this reinforcement washer in place. All the way across and all the way along the tunnel, all the way to the front of the car, and all the way out through the four pan there and through the four pan there, but not cut right there yet. We're gonna cut that once we get everything unbolted. All the way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of those bolts we're gonna remove. This floor pan is almost completely free of the body. What we're gonna have to do now is cut through here and along the bottom side of this to that line but not cut into the heater channel. Eh, we got a little piece of wood under there, that's awesome. Well, we'll get rid of that in a moment. That's why I don't actually like using these jack points, because they jack up your body. Structurally, overall, it's still strong enough, but I just, I don't like these at all, and I don't like installing them. But for vintage sake, I will put them in. I'm just not a fan. Ugh. Again, on the outside of this line, straight up to there. Straight up to the body, not through the body, ever so cautiously. And there we go. That gives us a little bit of safety so we can continue cutting that last bit right there. Like so. All right, and now up at the front, basically like we did here, except this is a little bit easier now that the floor pan's out of the way. We'll cut through that last section at the front. Didn't even have to cut it, just had to tear it out. Now we'll come back in and touch up the remnants. There we go. So with that, our old floor pan is out. Well, 98% of it. The other 2% still left on the tunnel and the rear cross member. I gotta work on getting that out of the way. And then we can put the new floor pan in. We do wanna save our old pedal stop. There we go. And you can see a lot of the old seam sealant that VW used. And we're gonna go through and do the same thing. But now, I don't know if you can get in with close to this, but we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten little spot welds, and they're basically every yeah, inch and a half, inch and a quarter. That's what holds the factory floor pans in place, is just spot welds every inch and a quarter or so. So keep that in mind when you're welding new floor pans in. You can drill along the edge and, you know, drill a hole every you know, inch and a half, and do a little rosette weld, or what I'll do is actually just come in and do a little seam about every inch and a half, just a little quarter inch seam, and I'll weld on the top side to hold the floor pan in place. So, from there to there is done. Now I just gotta do all that over there. Wasn't that fun? VW Beetle 58 to 70, well it's technically you can use this as early as 54, seat rails are the same. Floor pan, left hand side. These are our heavy duty floor pans. That looks to be a little bit more solid than our other pan, doesn't it? Seat rails are already welded in place, holes are already drilled out. 
We've got our pedal stop nut cert welded in place. That's the pan itself. I honestly have no idea what that is. I know what that is and I don't like it. I know what that is and I don't need it. There is, unless this piece is completely rusted out in your car, don't cut it out. It is seam welded against the tunnel here and here and out at the frame horn at the end of the spring plate housing right here. It is much easier just to leave this in place on your car or on your chassis actually than it is to try and reuse it. You know, they come with them. It's awesome if you need them, but if you don't, don't cut it out. It's much easier to do a floor pan without cutting that piece out. This guy obviously welds in like so. I will weld this one in place but I just don't ever recommend using these. I'll get a measurement off of this passenger side, which is still in place from this hole or this hole to this point, and we'll weld it in. And now we'll go through and we'll get some measurements from our tunnel to our holes, tunnel to our holes, because in all my experience, I've had to cut along this lip on virtually every single car uh, where this is going to be seamed in the back. This is typically going to have to be cut and oftentimes this area right here will have to be trimmed down as well to get this up in place in the car, but we'll figure that out as we go. From that body bolt there to the center line, about three and a half inches back, we should put that right about there, right about there when the time comes to our tunnel. 13 and an eighth. Let's make sure that's relatively square. Kind of hard to see down there. 13 and one eighth to that first body hole. Two, three, four. Let's go to the fourth body hole. 18 and a quarter. Five, six, seven. We'll go at number eight. Actually, no, I'm about to go seven on a straight portion of the pan. Uh, 20 on the dot, basically. So 20. 13 and an eighth to the center line of that hole, right about here. Two, three, four. We were something and a quarter. I think it was 18 and a quarter. Yeah, 18 and a quarter. And four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I think it was 20 inches on the dot. And this is kind of, actually it's pretty stout. So 64 and a half plus our overhang at the front and the overhang at the rear three quarters and three quarters, so an inch and a half, 66 inches overall length. And we are 66 and three quarters. So front to back, we're definitely gonna have to trim as well. And the hard part is, is where do you trim from? Seeing as the seat rails look to be in the identical spot, I'm guessing our front is over long, but let's go from here. To there, 27 and a half more or less versus 28 and three quarters. So we have uh, 27 and three eighths plus we'll add five eighths. So we'll go out to 28 inches on the front basically. Well, no time like the present. Let's stuff it in and see where we're at. Yeah, we're uh, too long. I can't get it in that way. So, if we were to come in here, and right there, we can see our front to rear. Is that gonna actually line up over our fender or over our bolt hole in the back? I gotta check that right now. The answer to that is no. By about a quarter of an inch, I'm gonna start by trimming about a quarter of an inch off the back of this, and then we'll go from there. To get this hole to line up with this hole at the back, I need to take off about a quarter inch all the way across. I can always cut more off. It's a little bit harder to put more back on. So we'll start small and trim from there. Let's see how that fits. All right, getting better. Well, if the floor pan sat further that way, my oval hole at the back would be in the perfect place. So that's a good start. You get a good idea of how far we've got to trim up here. So one major spot is right here. And then right here, I know it's not really that straight up and down, but that's kind of a reference of where our lip is. And of course we need to overlap that lip. This one, I can't overlap. So that one's just gonna basically be butted right up against that section right there. This line here is where we're gonna butt up to that frame horn piece where we cut this thing at the heater channel. 
and I'm gonna leave it a little bit long just so I can gently massage it with a hammer later. And this is the front of our floor pan now. And we wanna overlap that by about a half an inch. So we'll come in right about here. And then this section, we're gonna come up and over to right there, just to leave that again to butt up. We're gonna use a lot of seam sealer right here once this is installed, because this isn't actually welded all the way to the tunnel, but it will be sealed up, believe me. Let's give that a test fit. Obviously lengthwise we're having issues, but if I could get a long enough body bolt, I could try and bolt these in and then get a scribe on there, but let me see what I can come up with as far as a couple bolts to hold the floor pan up in place so I can scribe our tunnel to make sure we get a good scribe line there. Yeah, hold that for a little bit. All right, that's better. A little bit better idea of how this is gonna fit in here. All right, now we're gonna kinda have to eyeball, but that'll give us a really good idea. We're gonna go a half inch out on that line and then take that all the way back. And that should hopefully give us a nice fit all the way around. Notch that corner right there so that this can pop up and hook in right around there. And then I can massage that in. But either way, as much wrestling as this is gonna take to get in, first I'm gonna go through and clean that rail up on the chassis, hit it with a little coral seal real quick, and then, uh, then I'll come and lay the floor pan and that way I'm not wrestling it just to have to pull it out, back out once I get it back in place. And as far as our pan to body seal, I'm gonna stick some weather strip adhesive on here when I bolt it back in place and we're gonna call it good. And honestly, I know that's gonna to have to come back too. On the standard floor pans, you could just bang that into shape, but on the heavy duties, it's not gonna. So let's just trim that down. And since I don't like rust, that's a wonderful thing. Couple more. There we go. Make sure our panda body seal is in place down here. And uh, I'm gonna go get all the, the body bolts in place. And that's almost all the hard part. I mean, honestly, it is the hard part. Welding, at this point, pretty dang simple. Everything's back in place. Overlapped. Overlap that tunnel piece all the way across the back. Butted up and slightly overlapped on that front seam and sitting inside the pan all along the tunnel. We trimmed that out and I'll come back and persuade that little lip right there. And then we'll get some seam sealant right here and in this gap right here and obviously on the inside. And that is good to go. I haven't ground anything down in here for the most part anyway. We got a couple spots that are ground. So hopefully, hopefully I'll have enough bare metal to arc out. There, we can see it's welded on the back two legs, welded on the front legs, and the brace is welded on the top, the back, and the front. And we've got welds all the way back in there. 
all the way up. Seam welded that and that every inch and a half or so, even including back behind the seat rail where it's nice and tight, all the way across the front, or all the way up to the front rather, and across the front, and even seam welded that guy all the way up the front there. Again, doesn't really matter because all this is going to get seam sealed, but before we do that, we're going to use some Cora Seal. All the way back, all the way along the tunnel, all the way to the front. And with that, I got one side done, the hard side. I got to do it all again on the right side, but at least you guys now know the process. You don't have to pull the body off to get a floor pan done. Showed you guys how to do it relatively easy. No reason why if you have the right tools and some time, you guys can't do it in your own cars at home without pulling the body off. It's not that hard. Until next time, guys. Thanks for watching.